The findings of one of the top winners, Liu Yongtan, are expected to improve radar detection systems. Gary Engelbrand takes a look at the man behind China's latest discovery. Liu Yongtan is one of two scientists to receive the highest honor of the National Science and Technology Award for 2018. Liu has been recognized for his work in array signal processing and faint signal detection. His latest findings aim to improve how radars detect signals by allowing for the reading of faint signals on land, air, and sea—a useful trick that could change the future of satellite networks. Speaking of his accomplishments, Liu attributed teamwork and a childhood dream to his success. This is a team effort. I couldn't have done it on my own. We're not geniuses. We're mediocre people. Who were able to bring together and materialize the ideals of intellectuals and those from our own childhood, and having achieved that brings about a heartfelt feeling. Born in eastern China's Jiangsu Province in the late 1930s, some of Liu Yongtan's earliest memories were that of war and chaos. When asked what drove him to the path of science, the answer was simple: the need to survive. I was born in 1936. I was one year old when we fled. Before the fall of Nanjing to Chongqing, I was four when we got there. When I was five, I saw dead bodies floating in the river, where it was bombed by Japanese airplanes. So you can imagine how cruel it was back then, and the sense that I need to be strong so that my country can be stronger, so that its people will never be bullied like this again. Liu soon found that strength in science, or more specifically, in the study of radars and their power in shaping national security. What followed was decades of dedicated work and research in electronic machinery and radio engineering at multiple high-profile institutes. These include Tsinghua University, the Institute of Electronic Engineering and Technology, Harbin University, the Ministry of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and the Chinese Radar Society. At the age of 42, Liu was among one of the first groups of Chinese students to study abroad in the UK at the recommendation of his alma mater, Harbin University. With the UK being one of the earliest pioneers in the development of radar technology, Liu felt a lot of pressure to perform. We realized how behind we were when we got there. So many of us were hungry for knowledge. We barely slept and would often awaken to a thought to go back to studying again. That was the state I was in. I was an associate professor when I went abroad, but the school questioned my credentials, so I was given tests to evaluate my knowledge. Many of us also published papers while there, but they had to be published with the schools in the UK and not China. So I decided to come back. Plus, at the time, China had already begun developing radar technology. But with China just entering the preliminary stages of radar development, Liu's ambitions were met with doubt. It was the beginning of China's reform and opening up, and people didn't really believe in our ideas of a new radar system. I had limited data to work off of when I first started. Most data I had was of the ocean's influence on radio waves, which at the time was useless. After a while, my team members started to have doubts about the project's long-term feasibility. Even so, Liu pressed on. Together with his team, they were able to gather enough data to secure their first funding from Harbin University to kickstart the project. Through countless hours of hard work, in 1991, Liu was elected academician of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering in 1994. Looking back now, Liu said his accomplishments wouldn't have amounted to what they are today without a bit of luck and support from his country. All this is because of the reform and opening up policy. With it, we were able to broaden our horizons. China had a lot of catching up to do, but the timing was on our side. Even if we didn't have enough initial funding towards the end to do and experience the things we did. Gary Engelbrandt, CGTN. Now let's find out more about Professor Chen Qihu and his outstanding contributions. Up until days before receiving the award, 81-year-old academician Qian Qihu was still working and traveling all over the country. Qian's work was not publicized for a long time, as much of it falls under the highest level of confidentiality regulations. When Chinese people are carrying out their everyday lives, they may not realize that other cities lie under their feet. If the overground environment is damaged, these cities can provide shelter 
and store the basic supplies needed for survival. After more than 60 years of hard work by Chan Chi Hu, China has built an indestructible steel Great Wall underground. Our protective construction is just like the steel Great Wall. The Great Wall used to resist invasions. Now we are talking about an underground Great Wall. Not above the ground, but underneath it. In recent years, China's self-developed new weapons and equipment have been appearing one after another, attracting attention both at home and abroad. But without strong protection from attacks on their locations in China, these developments will have all been in vain. The protective infrastructure Chen Xi Hu has worked on throughout his life acts just like a heavy shield to protect the country from damage by the enemy in wartime. It is a strategy considered by many to be as important as China's research and development of weapons. We are armed with aircraft and artillery, but we also need constructions to protect ourselves, to protect our own command, to protect the security of the army, and to be able to strike the enemy safely. Many places that already play a part in Chinese people's daily lives also have links to Qian Qihu's work. Qian put forward many suggestions on some of China's major projects, such as the Nanjing Yangtze River Tunnel, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, and South to North Water Transfer. He also planned the underground spaces for more than 20 key fortified cities, providing reliable foundations for China's future cities. Cities are building subways. Urban underground spaces are being developed and utilized, and integrating the above ground and underground is also necessary. I was the first one in the academy to put forward this concept. As what he has been working on is closely related to rock mechanics, and because of his achievements in this field, Qian Qi Hu became the first Chinese member of the International Society of Rock Mechanics. Qian has now spent 64 years studying protection engineering. He's proud his contributions are playing a part in creating a peaceful environment for the Chinese people. Timothy Ulrich, CGTN. For more insight into this, we're joined in the studio by Professor Zhu Chenghu from PLA National Defense University. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor. I'd like to start with the achievements made uh, by the two professors. Tell us more about their applications in both military and civilian sectors. Uh, if we look at these two um, award uh, recipients, we can see that they, they are, are pretty much concerned with the uh, uh, military. Mm. Uh, the first one is uh, prof the professor uh, Liu Yongtai. Uh, Yong he is a scientist and uh, uh, in in writer. Uh, this is of course our dual purpose. One is for the military, the other for the uh, civilian use. Mm. The other one is for defense project uh, studies. Mm. Uh, so these two shows that uh, uh, China has made big progress in this regard. If mm. we feel, uh, if we look back at the history, China's radar system is very backward in the past, you say 10 years ago. So nowadays we have made very, very rapid progress mm. in the uh, research and development of radar and radar systems. Mm -hmm. um, radar systems, by radar systems I mean the radar for different purposes. So this is because of the result of their uh, continued and the consistent efforts of uh, scientists like Liu Yongtang. Mm -hmm. And the other one is for, uh, for the defense project uh, research. This is also important because under the present uh, situation with the uh, changing of the security environment, I think this is most uh, very, very important for the Chinese to protect itself with the development of the uh, uh, offensive weapons like uh, uh, li like those uh, uh, bombers which can uh, go deep into the soil. So this is of course uh, one of the aspects. Of course I believe that uh, these two projects, I mean these two scientists made very outstanding contribution not only to the military uh, development but also to the civilian uh, development. Right, so if we take a look at a big picture. Uh, how much is this uh, National Science Award an inspiration to all scientific workers, whether they're in military or whether they're uh, civilians? So this is actually an encouragement for the scientists to 
dedicate themselves to the study of uh, the sciences or technologies which China need. I believe these two scientists have got these uh, characteristics. So in this regard, I believe with the modification of China's policies on research and on the uh, science and technology, and with the modification of the policies of uh, attracting the uh, scientists from abroad, I believe that we will have a very, very important age, which can be described as the explosive development of indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, innovation. Yeah, 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 yes. Thank you very much, Professor yeah. Zhu Zhenghu from PLA National Defense University there.